Hi guys, welcome to another beer review, and today we're going over to Manchester to the guys at Cloudwater once again. And this is brewed in collaboration with uh, Jeff Bagby from Oceanside, California, Full Fat Productions, I think they're called, who put on an event, or it's a food and <coughs> drink event in Manchester. And uh, they all came together to brew the where is the name of the beer gone? The JPA, which is a 7% West Coast IPA. So I'll quickly read you the blurb on the back uh, before we get into it. Brewed to commemorate our dear friend, John Paul Casti, we collaborated with the renowned Jeff Bagby from Oceanside, California. This classic West Coast IPA was packed full of hot side hops and brewed with a neutral Californian ale yeast. All the profits to the beer will go to support the amazing work <coughs> Excuse me, of headway supporting those affected by brain injury. So the yeast is WLP001. Uh, the aroma hops are Cascade, Centennial, Chinook, Columbus, Amarillo, Simcoe. What a hot build that is. Bittering hops are Pilgrim CO2 Alpha Extract. Malts are Helician, Wheat, and Caramalt. And apologies if I keep wheezing, I'm just coming off a cold. But uh, yeah, this is a fairly special beer actually, and um, to commemorate uh, Jeff, <coughs> excuse me, let me start again. Uh, so this was actually brewed to commemorate and pay tribute to John Paul Casti, who played an absolutely massive part in Manchester's craft beer scene. Mm -hmm. um, heavily involved in the likes of Port Street Beer House, I believe. Um, I'm not going to lie, uh, I don't know too much because I'm still very fairly new to this, but it, it was a name that was brought up quite a few times from what I remember. And uh, there's an absolutely lovely little blog post on the Cloudwater website uh, with a bit of a tribute from Full Fat and uh, just talking about what he did and not just what he did for Manchester Bruins scene, but he sounded like an absolutely wonderful chap, and uh, yeah, such a sad way to go. Um, I believe he was on his way either to or from Yorkshire to Manchester, and he collided with like a, a caravan or something along those lines. Uh, what a what a terrible way. Uh, well, every way is terrible, really. But um, yeah, so I think it's absolutely beautiful that they've come together and uh, brewed a beer. And I think they actually did the release part of this at Port Street just before Indie Man started. It was either before Indie Man started or during Manchester Beer Week. But um, yeah, fantastic, fantastic stuff in terms of its concept. And I know I sometimes make the argument of, uh, well, sometimes it's only beer. Don't get, you know, don't get too fussed, it's only beer. But I can't think of too many uh, culinary industries that would come together in such a way to uh, commemorate someone who helped put Manchester on the map. And uh, one of the things I did read was that back in 2012, I think he was one of the first people to bring uh, an oak barrel from Bamberg over uh, for a Schlenkerler event. So um, if only I was really, really into this sort of stuff back then. But yeah, I'm, I, I love the Port Street Beer House. Uh, every time I've been, there's been a good selection. And uh, yeah, Cloud Water. Once again, Manchester, as you know, my favourite city in the world. Although I have no roots in Manchester. But that doesn't matter because ever since I was about 14, probably when I went to a gig with my dad, there was just something about the city. And then you start getting into... Obviously, Manchester's musical history with like Factory Records, uh, well, the likes of Joy Division, A Certain Ratio, New Order, The Smiths, Stone Roses, you name it. And then, uh, of course, one of the things that really did um, put Manchester on the map for me was the absolutely beautiful 24-hour party people, which to me is just the, the greatest film of all time. And... Uh, even if I'm just there for a few hours, or a day, or staying over, I always have an absolutely wonderful, wonderful time in Manchester. And I met so many great people there. And uh, 
hopefully one day um, I can be situated there. So then it's not, I don't have to rely on the complete wank stains that are Northern Rail. Anyway, can't talk today, do apologise, we're not going to dwell on that. So uh, yeah, I'm very much looking forward to giving this a try and uh, I think it's great because of the concept, I think it's great that the proceeds go to charity and uh, I think it's great because I get to drink another cloud water beer. And there's some absolutely gorgeous artwork from David Bailey on the label. And if you actually compare it to the photo that this is referencing from, it just makes the illustration that much more fantastic. So, best before date, or can on date, 26th of October 2019, uh, 18, sorry. I think they must have rebrewed it then, which I think is a good thing. Uh, then fresh scale is the 5th of the 12th set, uh, December of this year. God damn it. And then the best before date is the 13th of February 2019. So yeah, a West Coast IPA and uh, clocking in at 7% ABV. There we go. And of course, got the brand appropriate glassware. But as I said, if you want to read more about this beer and what inspired it, then I will put the uh, blog post down below. But yeah, I didn't want to, you know, read too much and then go into it because then I end up going on and on and on during the video and probably get a lot of information wrong, which I really don't want to do. But I didn't just want to gloss over why this beer was made, do you know what I mean? But uh, yeah, beer in a glass, and that is looking like a classic West Coast IPA, if I ever saw one. It's weird, isn't it? You rarely don't see too many IPAs like this now. But um, yeah, I'm, I'm a big lover of West Coast hoppy, resiny IPAs. It's what really got me into craft beer and IPAs in general. I'm adoring the, the juice, don't get me wrong. Some of my favourite beers have been very hazy New England style IPAs, but I always love it when I can get a nice classic West Coast IPA. So I'd imagine this could be inspired by John's favourite style. I'm not too sure. Uh, as said, I just I, I briefly went over the the blog post. But uh, yeah, seeing the the photos of when they put on the the night uh, to celebrate this release was just absolutely fantastic. So anyway, it looks wonderful. Let's see what it smells like. Oh, there's about. One thing is worth a white coloured head, as if you didn't know that already. Loads of gentle citrusiness. It's not smelling like a palate wrecker, which is, you know, a bit of a stereotypical aroma for beers like this, I suppose. But yeah, you get this lovely candy-like sweetness there. There's almost like a slight caramel aroma coming through. It's like cake batter, but then these lovely citrusy hoppy aromas coming out of there. A little bit of dankness as well. A little bit of pine. Lychee, grapefruit, that sort of stuff. It's really nice and sherbetty as well. It smells lovely, so uh, let's give it a taste. Cheers, guys. Okay. Wow. Instantly you get hit by a hoppy bitterness. And it's absolutely wonderful. It's almost spicy on the tongue. It's really tingly. <laughs> Excuse me. Lovely upper medium mouthfeel, but there's like still a nice level of crispness there. Lovely grapefruit bitterness on the back end. Does it have the IBUs on this? Let me see what the IBUs are, if possible. No, I don't believe so. Just says 7% ABV and 440 mil. Hmm. Oh, yeah, it's really... 
building up on the back end. Loads of tart sherbetty tones, ounces and ounces of grapefruit. They get a blood orange, sticky resininess, lovely savoury edge as well. That's thank you. That's chips for no reason, but I'm gonna happily accept them. Mm. Yeah, that's really nice. It's such a a great palette refresh because um, I had a phase where I was like, I'm gonna I'm gonna hold back off these like fruity, sweet, juicy IPAs. Let's have something a bit more classic. But now I'm really back into the juicy, sweet IPAs, and I'm drinking this. I'm like, I want more beers like this. But yeah, it's it's a really good beer. Making horrible noises as I gulp. Apologies about that. Mm. I really like that a lot. Just what I'm really in the mood for, actually. And it's actually a lot more uh, intense than I thought it would be. On the nose, it's really reined in and balanced and nice. Almost has like a slight fragrance about it. But on the palate, it's like boom. Not a palate wrecker, but it's almost there. I'd say it's roughly around 70 to 80 IBUs, perhaps. That's just a uh, shot in the dark right there. But no, even if this wasn't a nice beer, I'd still be definitely behind it because of uh, the concept and that sort of stuff. But at the same time, I wouldn't just say it's a good beer because of that either. Do you know what I mean? But um, thankfully... There's nothing wrong at all with it. And it helps to a good cause for those affected directly or indirectly, for those who have lost. And it also commemorates uh, a key figure in uh, one of the most exciting uh, beer scenes in the country. So um, if you get the chance to pick up a can, definitely do yourselves a favour. I'm going to put all the links down below as usual. As I said, I'm going to put the blog post because it's a really nice read. I'm going to read it properly after I've uh, recorded this. Uh, then I'll put, obviously, Cloudwater. Who else have we got? We've got um, Jeff Bagby. I'm not sure if Oceanside is a brewery or just part of California. But he will be down below. As will David Bailey. And, of course, uh, Headway will be included also. Uh, pick this can up from Manchester in beer moth beer moth so every aspect of this beer actually has been really satisfying for me so in terms of a rating <coughs> i'm gonna give that an eight out of ten mm -hmm. really nice stuff and it's got a great well it's got a great sort of tribute about it and um yeah i'm i'm totally behind that it's lovely stuff, it really, really is. Anyway, if you tried this beer, then let me know your thoughts, opinions down below. Uh, what do you think of the, the brewery? Uh, do you have any stories that are relating to the beer? Love to hear that in the comments. Check out uh, everyone involved. If any of my friends and fellow beer tubers have viewed it, the links are down below as well. And uh, yeah, check out the, the charity that this beer is supporting as well. Because I think we need, we need more of that nowadays in this shitty world that we found ourselves in so uh yeah thank you for watching and i shall hopefully see you all later cheers and you all take